Since the invention of the human brain, humans have wondered, what if we use 100% of our intelligence at once? Such an achievement would lead to unprecedented human progress, new inventions, and society. The question that nobody asks however, is what if we use replacement inaccessible infinity percent, of our brain? We will be answering that question, in immersive engineering, petroleum, and technology. A Minecraft mod that allows for the total destruction of nature for monetary gain, and genius high IQ factories. Without further ado, we shall begin engineering. Disclaimer. This is more of a mod showcase than a legitimate playthrough so a few cheats may be used to show the mod's full potential. Also there are extra mods used which I will list here. Anyways we shall, we shall begin engineering. Now what is the goal of this game? The goal is to turn this abandoned garbage lamentable city, into a bustling factory teeming with nefarious invention. By any means possible. So all of this was mine to explore. I began scavenging around the area. No life in sight. There were chests though. So I could repurpose several objects of monetary value. Which included iron tools. Step 2. Put these newly acquired objects in my new base, aka the top of a building, and prepare for step 6. While I was wandering around killing animals for comestibles, I stumbled upon an abandoned subway system, which intersected with several huge cave systems. And guess what is in these caves? Juicy resources. I kidnapped ores for 5 kiloseconds. Totaling to about 65 billion US dollars worth of resources, which will last a while. I then paid a visit to the nether for two things. First thing was to do a blaze genocide since blaze powder is an important ingredient for industrialization. Second thing is to use the basically infinite lava here to smelt my ores into usable ingots. Now that the boring part of starting a factory is done, it's time for the slightly more exciting part. Turning raw materials into basic machines to turn raw materials into medium rare materials. Notable mention. I need tools. So I got tools such as this iron convex polyhedron attached to a wooden curvilinear crystal a hammer. And I will start with the coke furnace. It is basically 27 bricks arranged in a trigonal trapezohedron right rhombohedron and activated with the hammer. When it is up and running, this very slowly cooks coal into coke. Not to be confused with erythroxylon coca powder. This radically transformed coal can be put into another trapezohedron known as the blast furnace, to very slowly cook iron into steel. Another new addition to my base is the alloy kiln, which combines two objects into one fancier object. With steel and fancy objects, I have basically unlocked everything else in the game. Let's not get too excited though. Because I have a new problem. I have no electricity. And everything beyond this point needs electricity. So by combining my steel and fancy stuff, I made my first generator. The thermoelectric generator. Which uses the difference in Seebeck coefficient to make power. In common terms, this means putting lava and water next to it. But this is not enough. Power is useless if the power is not powering anything with power. So I made wires and connectors to transfer it wherever I want. I also made a capacitor to store this aforementioned power. But wait. With small power, comes small responsibility. Touching power causes the human body to jerk violently. I was doing some more experimenting when I discovered that I am immune to electricity and water. Which is cool. Anyways this is cool and all. But what should I do with power? The answer is obvious. Make more appurtenances. Behold. The coke furnace blast furnace conveyor belt processing line complex factory. These furnaces constantly spit out coke which is conveyor belted into the improved blast furnace, which is powered by these cables to smelt steel faster. Now instead of an unbearable wait time, there is a disappointingly long wait time. And I have a lot of steel. The coke furnaces also make cumbersome amounts of byproduct fluid which I had to dump automatically using these fluid outlets. Even though this has created a massive oil spill, the good thing is this is basically an elevator between the ground and my base. There is a bright side to everything. But now it is a bit too bright. Because the oil touched the lava pool and burst into flames. 
and this is releasing a lot of pollution into the skies, in the form of dark grey cubes. But all of this is a tomorrow problem. Work must go on. After about zero minutes of using this, I determined that this generator is garbage. For my future plans, I need a power source so powerful that it exceeds the rotational energy of M87. After researching on this thing called Google, I had an epiphany. Lightning is one of the powerfulest forces in nature. And there is a way to harvest and enslave lightning energy. To do this, I shall make a precarious staircase up to the high limit of this world and construct the lightning base. For now, it does nothing. So I attached a large grid of steel to it. Because lightning likes metal. Step 54. Wait for a thunderstorm to happen. Step 55. The thunderstorm was already here anyways. As expected, all the lightning is redirected here. And one single strike gives me 16 million energy units. Just how much is 16 million? A whole f***ing lot. This makes every other power source in the game look like a ionization energy of hydrogen. Even the cannot come close to this lightning base. So let's make the thunder last forever. With power, resources, and fancy resources, I am unstoppable. However, I forgot to put out the oil fire for five days leading to the creation of a massive cloud of carbon dioxide leading to acid rain and various health consequences such as all of these consequences. So I had to relocate the base to dodge the giant pollution cloud. Finally, fresh air. And no more oil waterfalls. And I can begin grinding again. Since this is basically a sky base, it should be much easier to expand outwards. And I have an aggressive expansion plan. Speaking of plan. I have a plan to make my sub count surpass sin x plus sin y equals sin x y. Please subscribe so I can surpass the trigonometric function. Anyway back to what I was talking about. With this steel, I am going to make the materials for the excavator for the excavator. Now what is a good excavation zone? To answer this question I used a core sample to sample this area of thin air to check what ores were in it. For example. Nothing. I don't want nothing though. So I will try again in a new area. Then I repeat this until I find a magnetite vein. Once I place the excavator above the vein, I will connect them to the power storage, and it will begin automatically mining ores. This is convenient because this works in the sky for some reason. With these ores I can make more sky bridges since I was running out of normal materials to build with. But also use them to procure nonsensical amounts of steel. Which I was going to use to expand the lightning rod. This was slightly hard due to the return of the giant cloud of pollution. It followed me everywhere. I was dying. But I must sacrifice my health for the grind for something that may not benefit me. With more iron and energy, the next step is making a factory to automate everything else automatically so I don't have to do it not automatically. Three negatives make a positive. Anyways it was time to make my factory. Now this setup is self-explanatory. The ores are automatically smelted by these giant furnaces aka arc furnace aka something that actually exists in real life and these smelted resources go towards yet another furnace. There is also a new excavator here procuring coal which turns into coal, leading to a conveyor belt that splits coal 32 ways upwards, downwards, and left and right into a grid of 32 floating coke furnaces, which all outputs into two crushers, both of which feed into the giant furnace I mentioned 12 seconds ago, where the coal and iron amalgamate into steel at preposterous speeds which all feeds into a silo storing all the steel because chests were no longer enough. Now how did I accomplish all of this you may ask? With more core sampling, clay excavators to make furnaces, more lightning, and more ore. Notable mention. Item sorters. With all this I have basically solved world hunger. Or did I? This, along with all the pollution made by the awesome factory leads to the sky being blocked by giant clouds of carbon and sulfur that are trapped in the atmosphere due to the lightning grid, basically creating a giant hellish greenhouse. A pinnacle of engineering. The health effects due to this were catastrophic. While I was in the middle of building this, I apparently breathed so much pollution that it made me high. 
I couldn't really see where I was going in the construction zone. Which led to several health issues such as being dead. But it was worth it. With the tens of thousands of steel I now had, I then created this. Behold, the ultimate lightning grid. Supported by about a bajillion lightning rods and many cables connecting the whole thing together. Even though this has turned into a nightmare world under the shadow of steel and deadly wires, I have energy. Not only that, it also serves as a scaffold to get anywhere around the base. This is the magnum opus of engineering. A giant middle finger to the laws of physics and strong nuclear force. But now that I have solved most the world's problems, I have created even more problems in the process like a true engineer. The pollution levels had reached physically impossible amounts. I was constantly at half a heart and also starving. In order to survive, I made a miniature garden growing weed for bread for sustenance. Meanwhile, the pollution was bringing everyone else down with it, including the hostile mobs wandering around the sky bridges. Everyone could die in single him due to how unhealthy everyone was. Including me. This base was basically one giant game of CSGO. So it is time to invest in the most American thing in existence. The magnetic iron rod shooting rail gun. But why stop there? I added a bunch of unnecessary upgrades to it to create the magnetic capacitor precision scope augmented rail gun. Which uses rods as ammo. After testing this out, I can safely say that I am now a yogurt man. That was until my gun ran out of electricity after shooting two times. And I have to spend precious time waiting for it to charge. I was about to use it again when I got nausea from the pollution, making me miss. The gun was made even more useless because the base was well defended by the wires anyway. So I have a new base defense plan. Say hello to the new chemical thrower, which can throw lava, water, and concrete. It was pretty obvious what water will do when spray. But what if there was a concrete thrower? It was time to rebuild the clay excavator and dump all the mined clay into this newly created mixer, to make basically infinite concrete for personal use. Which I injected into the thrower. After testing this for 2 seconds, I instantly had new ideas. I began using it on live subjects such as this skeleton here. But I was served my own medicine. And this gave me yet another new idea. Why not attach these guns, onto a bigger gun? Behold, the chemical turret, watching over everyone and everything. When connected to the concrete mixer, this automatically ambushes every living thing with liquid concrete, turning them into statues. Nearby mobs could no longer threaten me because they were now more paralyzed than me. It was so efficient that the turret defended me from myself. I was going around suffocating stuff as usual when I made a mind-blowing discovery. When liquid concrete is placed, it doesn't go away that easily. It covers the base with dried concrete pancakes. While this may seem like a disaster, I took a step back to survey how much damage had been done. But then, I burst into joyful tears. This is an absolute masterpiece. Art in its purest form. Not only is it great at building walls for the base, but it will probably defend against the mobs. I had to continue. Approximately a few buckets later, I can say that this base has reached max efficiency. I have sacrificed some wire connections for extra defense and I can say that it's working. For some reason one bucket of concrete turns into 1000 solid blocks. And like everything else, these concrete pancakes do not conform to reality. And don't worry about anything down there because it was already dead from pollution anyways. The only side effects are that I can't sleep now. And sometimes I got trapped in dried stuff which took about 10 minutes to break out of because I am severely crippled by pollution. Overall, concrete was a very interesting feature. So far I have tested nearly everything except oil drilling and solar panel stuff because that is all unnecessary compared to what I already have. So this concludes the immersive engineering test. Overall this mod is a 10 out of 10 and I recommend playing it. This is not sponsored. Please subscribe for more stuff such as this. And shout out to the channel members.